getting into the top prop bets in college basketball, NHL, NBA, and a little bit of PGA today. If you guys enjoy this coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel. All right, so looking at the board for today, just in general, it does seem to be one in which right now it's a little bit tighter, but we have a big 10 game slate in NBA DFS. There's going to be NHL, we got golf, and obviously there's college basketball. I think throughout the day, we will be getting some really good props. And so I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to sell this. I never do because I want this this video to be very informational, but this is very much a day where I think throughout the day, we're going to see favorable props pop in and out of this kind of cheat sheet here, because right now, guys, and this is a tweet I put out. And if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, please do so. <laughs> uh, but looking at this, guys, the first six games of the NBA DFS slate are all projected to be blowouts. We know that that can lead to some high variance. And so with that, we don't have like any locks NBA wise. And I never like to use the lock words, but we don't have any like really strong bets. Now we can make some educated decisions on some bets, but it is kind of a, a day in which we are waiting for that information to come out. There's 10 slate or there's 10 games on the slate, six of them. They're blowouts because we're waiting on some in injury information. Now, real quickly, I do want to do kind of just a recap of yesterday's slate. Yesterday, we had two games in which looked like they were going to be great stacking opportunities. The Arkansas game ended up just being a blowout. That game did not go the way Vegas thought. Thus, the stack was bad. The UCLA Gonzaga game, those stacks hit very well. All of them hit which was awesome, okay? Uh, Tiger, Timmy, Bailey, uh, Strothard, those were all the players that we were on like directly, and then you could have went Hawkes as well. So we had a lot of bets like this, but this is the only one in which, and I kind of bet this twice, so I have two slips like this, but this is the only one in which Wagner did not screw us, or me, I should say, because Wagner got injured with like six minutes left in game time, did not get his over points, rebounds, and assists, was well on his way to doing that. Thus, it was a very bad beat, would have had uh, at least two six for sixes just by doing that UCLA stack. But the point I want to bring up is, and I realize I probably haven't touched on this as much, is like when I say a stack, this is essentially what I'm saying. Like yesterday's game was such a strong game to stack for UCLA. And like I did have a different one in there with uh, Hakez instead of uh, the UConn big. But it was very much a day in which it was fun because there's lots of stacking opportunities. And so when I say a stack, this is what I mean. And we're going to have that in one of the NBA games as well. We are betting on how the game is going to go based off the information that we have based off the Vegas line. And so I did call this out directly at the end of the video that, you know, I'm, we have two pretty good NBA bets. Obviously, Wagner got injured. That was unfortunate. J Val hit uh the arkansas stack you know missed because the game sucked and then this stack really hit and i called that out at the end of the video and i always try to call that out as well but i just want to call that out like this is a good example of what i mean when i'm saying stack and guys typically i don't like to like pull up past results or anything like that just because let's say someone's a new viewer they come in and they see like oh it was a bad night last night this guy doesn't know what he's talking about it's kind of their thought why would i listen to him and then they might not make some props that they they should be making based off of the information and then vice versa. Like if someone comes in and they see that, oh, it was a very great night last night, a new viewer, they're like, I need to listen to this guy. This guy obviously knows what he's talking about. They might make some bets that they typically wouldn't make because of that. Whereas it's literally just a long-term game that we're playing. Make the correct decisions in and out each day. That's going to be rewarding in the long term. But now I do want to get into some PGA bets real quick. I, I really feel like there's a big edge right now. So the Corrales Putacana Championship is a secondary event that's going on right now in the PGA Tour. The weather isn't too crazy, okay? And right now as it sits, golfers are going extremely low on the day, like much lower than expected, okay? These are extremely, extremely low scores. Now there are some golfers over par, okay? But for the most part, like the golfers that are over par are just bad golf, okay? Okay. Like it's a secondary event. There's going to be some bad golfers there. Okay. But we can see just it's favoring under par scoring. So prize picks has went ahead and adjusted for that. We probably don't have any props here, but on underdog, we are currently gaining a pretty big edge here. So if we look at Emiliano Grillo and Adam Long, those are two big edges that we just don't get. And we can see that with other golfers as well. Wyndham Clark, EVR uh, and Kramer Hickok as well. So like, like let's look at this. I got the snipping tool going here so we can kind of see all of them together. Like we can see Emiliano Grillo, 71.5. We are gaining a full stroke and a half that is just crazy Wyndham Clark a full stroke that is just crazy obviously pushes on underdog we don't really want uh Adam Long I mean this is this is crazy as well a full stroke and a half there okay EVR a half a stroke and then Kramer Hickok a full stroke so like we just don't get that that is crazy so if the course is going to play as easy as it is with the weather not changing throughout the day it does seem like oh no no, no, they just took it away. We still got Grillo there. Oh no, that is so frustrating. Oh, that's so tilting. Should have done a live stream, I guess. It's been a while since that's happened, but that's super tilting. I'm frustrated. Moving on to the next sport. I mean, what are the chances that that happens during the video? 
But we're going to move on into some NHL props. There's really only one. We'll see if it's still there. But that's the thing, guys. Like, this is what I was saying about, like, this is very much a slate in which there's so many so many sports going on so much stuff going on it's a friday slate we typically see like thursday friday saturday and sometimes sunday those are the four easiest slates just because there's a higher volume of sports going on thus we are getting more favorable odds that's why on mondays and even tuesdays the lines are much tighter and wednesdays as well they're much tighter because there's less sports going on that's why weekend slates are really the easiest like honestly if you're just focused on profit you're just doing the taco tuesdays and then you're just betting on really probably friday and saturday like if you're just focused on getting the best odds which obviously would result in long-term profit that should be when you're betting now just pulling up the best one that we're gonna get and i don't really love the 1.5 shots on goal props too much curious as your guys thoughts uh, i'm far from an nhl expert does anyone like this prop at all uh, obviously we're getting minus 138 that's typically the number I like to look at, minus 137 or better to get over 1.5 shots on goal. That's the best one that we're getting. Uh, and then we are getting almost two good ones. Jeff Skinner, we can see that the over is set at 50, or sorry, the under is set at 57 plus 57. So if we take the juice out of this one, there's still about a 53% chance for this one to hit. So not terrible there as well. But this one's definitely the best one that we're getting on the board thus far. At minus 138, we're getting about a 54% chance for this one to hit. <laughs> And just, I just remembered it. I mean, I didn't just remember it's, it's stuck in my brain, but the bittersweetness of the UCLA stack hitting was that my Bruins lost. That was such a tilting game. And that's kind of my segue into college basketball tonight. So already tonight, we did see one really favorable prop that was there this morning be taken away, but it does seem like there are going to be favorable props throughout the day and throughout the evening that we're going to get just once again, we got a high volume news is going to come in. That'll change kind of the whole dynamic of the props that we're getting. And so like, here's a good example. This was a prop that was made available like an hour, half an hour before lineup lock once David Singleton was ruled in. And these were both like minus 145 odds. So that's why I'm saying like today could be a day that pays off to be around at lineup lock. Now you guys saw the Tremel bet that I had made. This is why. Okay. Oh, and they bumped it. They had bumped it one. Interesting. This was originally set at 13.5. They have since bumped it to 14. Although the average sportsbook lines are saying it should be at 14.5 and they're slightly fair in that. Okay. Not a huge edge there. Probably one that we're just not making. Uh, but we are getting some edges here. Like we're getting a half of a point assist, whatever, uh, with Ryan Nembard here. Okay. Minus 100. So they're favoring the over there slightly. But to get over 3.5 assists, PrizePix has it set at three. So slight edges here. Same thing with Jerome Hunter, rebounds, Walker. And this is stuff that we typically just do not get. So that's pretty awesome that we're getting it. So the best one that we're getting on the night right now is going to be Rice over 3.5 rebounds at minus 141 this one has been hanging out there quite a while so that does kind of worry me is that the fact that they haven't corrected it yet uh all the other ones that were minus 140 or you know better odds they've taken away and if we look at it we can see underdog still has it there at 3.5 rebounds as well so you know obviously we're getting good odds on it but it's the fact that they they know that that line's out there and haven't adjusted it that does get me a little bit worried about kind of the confidence in that one. And then just looking through it, like we don't have any that really feel like locks really at all. Like to me, these are all pretty solid. And one, this is one that I think we need to be on the lookout for because early on the week, the over assist at 2.5 was at like minus 144 at some points, minus 140. It has like fluctuated throughout the week. And so this is one where, you know, maybe before lineup lock, the game starting, maybe this jumps up to minus 140. So that's kind of where I'm saying, like, it, it could be a day that just pays off to be around checking the odds before lock. Now, guys, the college basketball props that I'm going to give right now very much are ones in which I have made tonight just for having exposure to those games, just for fun purposes. Literally, that is it. Minimal bet amounts. And it's just because I want to have fun watching those games. I want to have more entertainment. It's definitely not in terms of trying to make mega profit or even trying to be profitable. Uh, it's literally just for the fun factor, which that happens. Uh, NBA All-Star break kind of did that. You know, obviously you're just a little bit more invested, but the first one that kind of stood out to me would be this one over 25 or over 21.5 points, rebounds, and assists. We can see, you know, four out of the past five games has been over. And if we go back further, like he has been consistently getting over this number. Uh, so I would say more times than not, he is going to be able to get over this for points, rebounds, and assists. Now I'm assuming it's just because of the matchup with Houston that he's projected to struggle. But like, even in this game against Duke, we take that back because only one minute, like he has been crushing this. Didn't get the over against FSU, I guess. Pitt got the over, Wake got the over, got the over 
got the over. So it just seems like a very favorable line that we're getting here. Kind of an interesting line here. Favorite as the push on prize picks, obviously. And so for Baylor here, we actually are getting a good prop as well. So minus 114 to get over 12.5 points. Prize picks currently has a line set 11.5. To me, that's a pretty big edge that we're getting. Now, if we look at his game log, that's not going to scream like over points, right? But also in theory, <laughs> this is an easier matchup going against Princeton. Obviously the 15 seed. They got hot for one weekend. We could see them cooling out, kind of like Arkansas. Not a terrible prop on paper. And then staying with that team, we also are getting another decent one. So we have Ryan here over 15.5 points. And we can see this is fared at minus 143. This is the best prop that we're getting on the day to get over points. And so if we look at his game log, he didn't get against Baylor, okay? Besides that, had been going on. And so once again, kind of an easier matchup in theory against Princeton should be able to get the over. Now let's take a look at that game just to make sure. Yeah, Creighton is 10 point favorites and it's a 140 in a half game. So if that kind of holds up to be true, you would think that those two players would be part of the reason as to why that game is a blow off. So like right now, this is literally the best bet that we're getting on paper. The unfortunate thing for those two is that I, I just don't feel like we have a prop that we could stack that. Like ideally, if we're playing both of the two credit and overs, we would, we would want to have a way to run it back with one of the Princeton players. And if we just look at all of them, they all kind of feel correct given the matchup. So let's go ahead and get into some of the NBA DFS props. And so like I already mentioned, all these games, this is insane. I don't remember the last time we saw this. The first six games are literally projected to be blowouts. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, four games that are projected to be double digit for the spread. I mean, that is crazy. We just don't see that. So that's going to lead to higher variance. And with that, we just don't have that much information to go off of because a lot of these are predicated on injuries. So what we do know, we'll start with the Spurs because... <laughs> The Spurs-Washington matchup is literally the only game in which I do think we could potentially run out a stack. So the Spurs are projected to be without, and I say projected because we never know with the Spurs, uh, projected to be without Zach Collins, game time decision. You kind of expect him to sit. Uh, Devin Vassell, currently a game time decision. Langford's still out. So Chan's still out. And so with that, Graham, Trey Jones are all expected to play. But if we just look at what Keldon Johnson has been able to do with Yakum Pertl, obviously he's no longer on the team, but played for a majority of the season, Zach Collins and Jeremy Sochan off the court. Keldon Johnson averages 27.8 points per 36. 6.3 rebounds and 3.1 assists so literally just based off of points and assists he should be able to get the over now the thing with it is it's like we know he's not going to get 36 minutes because that has literally just been the spurs but lately that's changed he's had 36 36 38 and 33 minutes so if those minutes are there this is probably one of my favorite props on the day but like we can see the risk here one it's a game that's could be a blow up, which now looking at that does seem fishy because <laughs> Washington here, they're going to be without Bradley Beal and Kyle Kuzma. And here's the tough part about Washington. If this was mid season, I think we'd just be going in on Monte Morris at 22 point five points rebounds on assists. we'd probably just be hammering the over you look at his per 36 numbers with bradley beal and kyle kuzma off the court way over okay 15.4 points 4.6 rebounds so already basically there and then you look at his assists it's a 7.4 so really just in one of those two aspects points and assists should be able to get the over and then the rebounds are just the cherry on top especially going against the spurs like that's highly appealing but i would say the minutes are not a lock Okay, last game, 25 minutes, 32, 20, 29, 20. Like the minutes have been very spread out for him. Now we can see he is being favored for over points and rebounds. That's good. Points, rebounds, and assists slightly projected lower. Let's see his minutes. So that's really what I'm worried about. Okay, so 29 minutes. Now, if we adjust for his per 36 not production with Real and with Kyle Kuzma off the court, he should be able to get the over if he's going to get around 30 minutes. But I think you guys can see kind of my hesitation there is that we can't. We're not projecting him to get a lot of minutes like he typically would be if this was the tail end of the season. And for what it's worth, it's because they're giving like younger guys a little bit more run like Jordan Goodwin. They also have Johnny Davis, who has been getting a lot more run recently. Uh, he could be someone against the Spurs gets a little bit more run as well. So far from a lock and load there. But that's why I'm saying like I don't mind it in a game stack where if the game's close, then it makes sense for these players to get more minutes. Now, if we look at Porzingis as well, obviously he gets a great matchup against the Spurs. He has been someone that lately has not been productive um, as much as you would think so, especially with like Kyle Kuzma or Bradley Beal out, hasn't had that production that you'd think he would. Now, if we look at his per 36 numbers with those two players off the court, averages 31.1 points, 10.1 rebounds, and 3.6 assists. Also, 
adds in a block and a steal. So his production with those players off the court is uh, average of 54.2 fantasy points per 36 with those players off the court. That's about a nine bump in fantasy production. Those are numbers that are just too crazy. Like I will be running out just a small little stack, but I want to make it clear, like both of these teams, like we can't project the minutes. Like Denny would be an awesome one as well, but I'm not confident in his minutes as well. So mostly just to stay away, it seems like. And I want to point this out for Calvin Johnson as well. His fantasy points are extremely low like actually if we're doing his bet it should be fantasy points because his points rebounds and assists is set at 31.5 his fantasy score is set at 33.5 if you go back to his recent game log he isn't really turning turn overing the ball too much about three maybe two you know that could be a worry obviously if he does have too many turnovers that's not great and it's not like he's getting that many blocks or steals but he has been getting a decent amount of assists as well so let's say he gets four to five that's going to make up for the turnovers there. And then if he gets, let's say, six rebounds, then that's going to put him in the plus for over fantasy score. Just once again, what I mean by that, the scoring here, you get 1.2 for a rebound, you get 1.5 for an assist. Obviously, if we get a block or a steal, should be able to hit that as well. And then lastly, I do just want to mention um, the Spur or the Toronto Raptors because they have a couple of question marks on this. Scotty Barnes is currently a game time decision. Gary Trent Jr. is a game time, game time decision and so is Precious. So looking at it, to me, that kind of seems like if we're going to get, be getting maybe a slight increase in usage from Fred Van Fleet, this is an, an extremely interesting number, I would say, for him. Uh, 34.5 for points, rebounds, and assists is highly appealing. Against Detroit, that's a favorable matchup. Once again, this is a game that is projected to be a blowout, though, so there is some concern there. And then Yakum Perl as well uh 29.5 points rebounds and assists going against detroit is highly appealing to me as well if detroit can keep it close enough for long enough that's huge and for what's worse some might want to bet the fantasy score for fred van fleet he has just been gaining a ton of steals and blocks which don't get me wrong should continue against detroit but at the same time like he's due to have a game in which he doesn't get a single one like it's just it's He's been on too much of a tear recently. And I would say because those two games are projected to be blowouts, I think the best move that we could do would be to bet the over in some capacity for the first half. That way we don't have to worry about those players not getting their final rotation, thus not hitting their overs. So obviously we could do Fred Van Fleet, could do Jakob Perto as well. But like, that's kind of it. All the other props I was looking at kind of do feel like we'd be forcing them a little bit. Now, I do want to call it that we are getting like good numbers on Kelly Olenek um, because Utah's banged up. I do think, that because of the game spread for Milwaukee, there is the potential that they could sit someone. The Jazz are going to be without Lauren Markkinen, Colin Saxon, and Jordan Clarkson. And with that, I'm very actually curious what the props are going to be or if we're going to get the props for Ochai. I believe that's how you say it. Um, because he has been someone that's been productive, just been playing a ton of minutes. And even in a blowout, he still should get some minutes. Obviously, like a bad game against Portland, had a decent game. You know, prior to that, just seemed like a, a one-off bad game for him. Then also, I'm very curious about Fontecchio. What is his prop going to be, or are we going to get a prop for him? Because with marketing out, I would kind of assume that he should get a little bit more run as well. But that wasn't guaranteed last game. We actually saw Kelly Olynyk just get a couple more minutes, and Walker Kessler kind of had his minutes limited as well. So it, that, that's what makes this difficult: is that we have a lot of games that are projected to be blowouts, and there are also teams in which like we can't accurately say how the minutes are going to be allocated. Now, as the board up updates throughout the day we might have better props and here, here's one with walker kessler this is interesting so some of the sports books are slightly favoring the over points at 11.64 so you know there's probably one that has it set at 12 minus 124 decent there we can see fantasy score for kelly olenic kind of heavily favored based off of the sports book odds but none of these feel like locks they kind of all feel like we're betting them just just to bet them really. And then just some more interesting ones to call out. You know, we're getting about a half of a difference in a lot of props here where the over is favored decently, you know, minus 119 for Denny over points, rebounds and assists at 26.1 price for size at 25.5 uh, Josh Green as well. Um, so there are some like, okay ones out there, but once again, I want to reiterate, does kind of feel like we're forced so here's what my bet of the day would be on prize picks for today and i do just want to call out something as well like um like obviously i'm throwing in calvin johnson here because of the simple fact that we want or i wanted to get to the the Creighton props because those are the most favorable ones on the board today is very much taking the human element out of it and just going based off the odds that we have and i do want to call out as well this isn't a slight edge difference for calvin johnson here but we can see 
underdog does have it favored a little bit higher you know like that's a about 0.75 higher which you know little stuff like that does add up so we're getting a little bit of an edge here as well but that's all for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did you know what to do give a like and subscribe uh if the board does improve throughout the day and i feel like it's worthwhile to put out another video i will um obviously i don't control that but if it's worthwhile i'll, I'll definitely try to do so but thanks for watching guys let's have a good slate and as always let's keep cashing